she was a very healthy kid, very happy kid, very positive child. Uh, loved the arts of every kind, you know. Great equestrian. The, one of the greatest kids you could meet. She was really bright, outgoing, uh, tiny. She was always tiny. But her personality was great. Just a wonderful, wonderful kid. She was just very much full of life. She could walk in a room and, and just light it up and help people. She loved to help people. she was still this big outgoing personality she started getting into some trouble near the end of her sophomore year we found her not coming home and making curfew when we would ask her to to make curfew um we found her at some parties or coming you know coming home drunk we found her sneaking out at night um, and then there were times, a few times, where she just didn't come home at all. We didn't know where she was. We were tracking her down. And conversation after conversation that we had seemed to go nowhere. And this progressively got worse and worse. Her grades started to slip. Um, she had some anxiety attacks during this time. And you know, we didn't know what to do. And we thought it was a kid just acting out. In the long run, we found it was very traumatic for her and very upsetting for her, um, moving so far away. All of these things got really mixed up in the overall picture to really see that she possibly had a mental problem. If she's feeling depressed, if she's feeling some anxiety, then I need to look into that further. We took her to UVA for her psychological testing, and it came back that she was suffering from anxiety and depression. And we think that she was misdiagnosed. And the year started off pretty well. We got some calls from friends, and I could just kind of tell also when I would go up to visit her and, um, and just calls from her that things were starting to slide. As she moved towards 18 and 19, we started to see a tailspin. And her last year of her life was getting rougher and rougher. It was, it was difficult. Not keeping up with classes. She was partying too much. Um, I was concerned about her medicine. When I got the counseling bills, there were some appointments that she just missed completely. She had started cutting herself. She she asked to come home. She just said, I, I can't handle it here. Um, you know, because she was here and there and everywhere, she was seeing different counselors. And I thought, you know, I really need to get her with a counselor that can stick with her, that can stay with her, send her for family counseling. Uh, Terry made the determination that she felt very strongly that Carolyn was uh, had bipolar disorder, and this was January of 2009. You know, the highest high and the lowest lows. Folks with bipolar disorder live above that and below that. And they'll, they'll do just about anything to get out of that space below that. And a lot of it's risky behavior. So she was living literally two different worlds, really. This world at the top with her friends, and then she came home to escape. And then she would leave home to escape the escape. Kind of odd to think about. You know, she found out how tough it was and asked to come home. And we said, absolutely. She was very excited about that, celebrated Sean's birthday, um, had a great time. And then I knew, okay, you know, I can start working with my daughter. Um, hopefully she'll want to, to work with us and, and get better. You know, that's where we just didn't have the chance to work with her. And, um, you know, she came home, and a few days later, I uh, killed herself. I went out and walked my dog, our dog, and when I came back, I called for her and looked around for her and had a really bad feeling. There was just something about the house that was so still and quiet. And um, something just hit me, and I ran up to her room. It was as if I just knew. And um, that's what I found. It wasn't her that 
killed herself. It was her illness that killed her. About three days before she died, we had a long chat about it. And Caroline had already, we didn't know this, had already checked out books on mental illness a month before. Genetic mental illness from Germanic Community Colleges checked the books out, found them under her bed. She could have possibly um, helped level herself out, and had we known more about this disorder as well, you know, we might not have been so hard on her, and we would have been more loving, because that's what they need. They need more hugs, they need more reassurances. I've been crying a lot because I miss my daughter, and I miss my best friend. Um, I miss her physical presence. I miss her making, making me feel so warm and happy and everybody else so warm and happy. But a part of me, knowing the pain she was in, you know, she's out of that misery. But the majority of her life, she was always striving to help people with all of her community service hours and her love for people. And it is no question in my mind that she went to the front of the line, was chosen to be able to pick out the wings that she wanted, and that God has already put her to work. Caroline is not with me all the time. That brings me a lot of peace. Sometimes a tear, but it brings me a lot of peace. Caroline would be thrilled to know that she helped others because that was her MO. There's about five people right now walking around with Caroline's organs, and we'd love to meet them one day. We really, really would give them a giant hug. I feel her spirituality in and around us all, and her friends, and in our house, and I have to work hard on Earth so that I can be worthy enough to join my daughter in heaven. That brings me peace. Caroline had probably a thousand people or so at her wake. Eight or nine hundred folks at her funeral. I have no idea how many letters and cards we've gotten. Five hundred thousand, I, I don't know. And we've read them all. Caroline was such a neat person that we don't want her death to be in vain. And we just don't want others to make the same mistake. Of course, if I could rewind the clock, knowing what I know, when I do things differently, I better believe I would. And maybe that's the message that we really want to get out to those families who have loved ones suffering from this horrible illness. You do have to treat them differently. But Caroline's life was great. She didn't go without. And so when people look at the Browns, they say, I am so surprised. Well, they shouldn't be any more surprised with us than they should be surprised with anybody in any situation. Um, this can happen to any family, and we just have to be more diligent and looking for it.